Oh boy, everybody, are you in for a treat? Hey, welcome to the Jim Masters Show, entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series. Jim Masters and the host chair reporting for duty once again, coming to you from the New York area in the United States with another incredible broadcast and another celebrity guest and dear friend of mine and of our show. This is her return visit to JMS, the Jim Masters Show. She has so many exciting things to share. She is an American treasure in television, film, stage, the arts, entertainment, as a brilliant actress, legendary actress, iconic actress, writer, producer extraordinaire. She has graced the stages of all of the wonderful stages. And she's also done the same with television and film. And we are so excited to have her here on the show. Who am I talking about? Yes, from the stages to television to film, Lane Bradbury. Yes, the incomparable, the one and only Lane Bradbury is making her return engagement here on the Jim Masters Show Life Series. And we are so honored and blessed. She really is an icon. She's also, in addition to being a, a super, super talent, she's also a brilliant mind. She's a compassionate soul. She's an empathetic human being. She cares about life. She puts so much into everything she does. She has so many wonderful friends and fans that love her. I am counted in that friendship. And uh, she is beloved because she's such a kind, hearted, sharing, caring person. And I can tell you that knowing her, and so that's a little extra bonus there for you as well. But from a professional standpoint, folks, she literally, as I said, of all the different stages that she's graced, yeah, some of your favorite television shows and series, your favorite movies, and so much more that she's either acted in, starred in, written, produced. She literally is a powerhouse of entertainment and has been doing it for decades. We're going to run through, of course, some of the extraordinary things like being a gypsy. Yep. Ethel Merman and company. That's classic. That is legendary. Everybody knows that. So many other extraordinary performances that Lane Bradbury has touched our lives with. One of her first in the 50s was actually working with Larry Hagman, and that's one of her favorites because it was one of the first things in coming to uh, the North. This is, of course, The Outcasts of Poker Flats, the 1958 TV production. Larry Hagman, George C. Scott, she was in that as well and loved working with Larry. We're going to talk about that. And as I mentioned, Gypsy and Wings of an Angel and so many things. We just scattered, you know, a little perusal here of information for you to bring back the memories of some of the extraordinary things that Lane has been a part of, which are, again, a part of American iconic television and film and stage, Americana. Even Unsolved Mysteries. Yes. What about Then Came Bronson, The Fugitive, Stolen Babies, Savannah, uh, quest for justice. I mean, the list goes on and on. She was even on the Partridge family. Absolutely. And a recent one, you're not alone, which we're going to talk about. She was very involved in. She's been on gun smoke. Absolutely. Death Valley days. Of course, you remember this, right? Maybe I'll come home someday. And of course this was back in 71 and, uh, there she is in the Partridge family. She was on Party of Five. Yep, on Fox. So many incredible performances. Mod Squad. Yeah, some of your favorite TV shows, as I mentioned. Uh, there she is, of course. It's Mary Florine. And maybe I'll come home uh, this in the spring, that is. Yeah, there's that one. And you may remember that. Another classic, all of these. Look at this dating back to the 50s as well. We dug this up, an absolutely stunning, beautiful shot of Lane. And again, she is truly a part of our psyche, of our lives. She takes has taken on so many incredible roles and has knocked it out of the park. She's a prolific writer and producer as much as she is a performer. There she is, of course, Carol R. Connors in the heat of the night. She was in that from the midst of pain, another one, Carmen. She was on Billions, 
Alice doesn't live here anymore. I mean, <laughs> are we sort of bringing back memories? A real American hero. The list goes on and on and on. This truly is a treasure trove of not only, you know, wonderful photos, but also of the life of somebody very, very special in all of our lives. And we're so honored again to have an opportunity to, to have her with us here to grace us with her wit and wisdom. She's still out performing. She's writing. She's producing. As a matter of fact, just moments ago before we started the show, she came in from French lessons. Yes, French lessons. She just came in the door from French lessons to be with us here uh, from those French lessons uh, to join us here on the Gym Master Show live series. So we are going to be uh, celebrating this absolutely spectacular human being in the best way we can with some laughs, some great memories, updates on some beautiful things that she's doing. Again, this is her return visit, her second visit to us here at the Gym Masters Show Live Series. She truly is a dear friend and a dear friend to us all and an American treasure. And we're so honored to have her here. I could go on and on and on, but let's cut that and go right to the chase. Let's have her join us here on the show right now from her home here in the New York area. Lane, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Series, my dear friend. How are you? Well, I just hope I can live up to everything you said. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is the short list. Just the brief <laughs> so I said, all the stages and TV and film and everything, my friend. How have you been since we saw each other last? How long has that been? That's only been a couple of years. It was pre- pandemic yes, when we were right. at your house for yeah. dinner at that beautiful <laughs> dinner party with friends and it was the wine was pouring and you were in the kitchen cooking and you cooked <laughs> and uh it was absolutely spectacular your home there and uh just across yeah, from yeah. new york and new jersey yeah. area and it was absolutely wonderful how have you been since you're doing well i mean the world i know has changed in many ways, and we'll get together for dinner again soon. I would love that. Yes, we will. We certainly will. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very concerned about our world. Um, I've, I think my, kind of my whole focus now is to do anything I can that will help to open up people's consciousness to where we are and and what we need to do to to survive um politically and and emotionally um i've i'm i've started working <clears throat> with kurt peterson um i saw him he 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 has an office <clears throat> in the the same place that where I go and 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 take voice lessons with Casey Erwin Clark and I would see him coming in and out and he was always so friendly and so one day I mean I got I got to thinking in my head wow it would be wonderful to do something with him and so one day I just went up to him and introduced myself and told him I would like to work with him. And so it's uh, that was about maybe two months ago. We've been meeting and we are, we're putting um, a show together that probably will we'll do sometime in the spring. <clears throat> but both our focuses are to do something that can help change the course that we're going in to bring some kind of enlightenment to it through what, through his life and through my life. And um, just, we want, we, I think we, we're both very, very concerned just about where we're heading in this country. And it's very frightening to me. And 
um, I feel like he's not my only ally in that, but but because I was brazen and went up and asked him if he'd want to work with me, we're in this now. And so we 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 meet about once a week and put our our ideas together to try to do um it wouldn't be a cabaret. I'm not sure what it would be. Um, but it would be a evening or evenings, you know, that um we would both share the things that changed us and and the things that made us grow and and um and the the whole the whole focus really would be to maybe enlighten in a in a way that we could change people because it's i know in my life it's the things things that have happened to me when I went to the theater and I, and I would come out of the theater a completely different person mm. from what I had seen. And, um, and so I, that's what we are, that's what we're heading for. That's fantastic. That's, that's really great. And how many days a week you're spending on that? Is it something that is constant? Well, you know, we we meet we meet once a week. I I was with him today, and and so we'll he records the sessions, and then um, uh, we come back and do some homework according to what what transpired today, um, and uh, so it's I mean it's we we. We know what we want to do. We're not quite sure exactly how it will be, but mm -hmm. we know that it will, that it, it will, we're delving into the things that really changed us. Which is beautiful. Um, and, and to see how that resonates, because I, I, I grew up in the, in the South when there was segregation. Yes. And I didn't even know that that was wrong. I grew up with it. It was what, how, it, how it was. And it was, it was when I came to New York and I was walking by St. Thomas Episcopal Church and I saw a black woman and a white woman come out of the church together and they were in deep conversation. I had never seen that in my life. And it was so beautiful. And then I went home to Thanksgiving. We were sitting around our dining room table. Our maid, Mary Plant, came in and served something to eat. And when she went back to the kitchen, I told my parents about seeing this black woman and white woman coming out of St. Thomas Church together in a deep conversation. My father looked down the table at my mother and said, Jeanette, Lane has been taken over by the communist mm -hmm. and she is not going back to New York. I said, yes, I am daddy, period. But it was, it was getting away from where I grew up and that I began to see things differently. And I had amazing people that gave me life lessons that open my eyes yes. to, you know, what is wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah. You know. Absolutely right. Which is a beautiful thing to have had those early on in life as well and to carry it through and everything you do today, Lane. You were born in Georgia near Atlanta and you studied ballet as a young girl. Yes. In the 50s, you decided to make your move to the Big Apple and you were admitted to the actor's studio and then you made that beautiful Broadway debut and JB performing with Raymond Massey, Christopher Plummer. What was that feeling like when you had such a big opportunity as that lane? Well, you know, I, I get, Kazan saw me, saw my work um, at, at the studio. And um, I guess I was just kind of a natural, I mean, it, you know, 
I didn't act. I just was. And so he gave me this part and, and I was learning all these new things about sense memory and, and private moments and everything. And so that up, because I didn't have, it wasn't a role where there was a lot demanded of me. Mostly I was just, I was just in the background, but, but it, it enabled me to really put to work the things that I was using at the actor studio. And it was a, it was an incredible opportunity to learn and to grow. You know, and when you take those opportunities and you, and you run with them, that's how you grow and you inspire others along the way. And then, of course, you starred in Tennessee Williams' Night of the Iguana with veteran actress Betty Davis. What was it like being a part of that iconic production and also alongside Betty Davis? Well, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because... I I had the the my my character was in love with um, the tour director um, Lawrence Shannon and he had rejected me and so um, I had certainly had experiences like that in my life where I've been just rejected and completely left but when you when you have to do a role like that every single night you cannot pretend it has to be real and so every single night i had to i had to you know do sensory work whatever i had to do to get onto onto that stage and be completely destroyed and it takes its toll on you um it it really there, there was, there was one, there was one time when I, when I didn't have to work, and that was when I was sitting, I was sitting, waiting to go on stage, you know, try preparing, and Betty Davis walked in front of me, and she stood there for a moment, looked at me, she then walked back to the stage manager, and she said, "What's she doing sitting there?" And the stage manager said, "She's preparing." And Betty Davis says, well, it's very disturbing. Mm. So they sent me down two flights of steps to, re to prepare so I didn't disturb Betty Davis. But the very fact that they had done that to me, I didn't have to prepare. It was so humiliating and so degrading and so dismissive that for that period of time I just walked down the stairs and I would start to cry mm. you know but it but that's um how did you let it not stop you from pursuing your dreams and and continuing how did you find the fortitude and tenacity to say you know what I'll dust myself off from that and move on and continue and doing what I need to do how did you where did you find that inspiration to do that lane I don't think I did because the, I was then cast in, what was the thing I was cast in? Um, it was, it was, oh, shoot, it's just gone out of my head. But I was cast, I was cast. Gypsy? No, 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 no. This was after Night of the Iguana. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, anyway, it was, it, I was playing a girl that was, absolutely hysterical, pregnant all the way through it. Yes. And it was one one of those parts where you, you're just you're just hysterical all the way yeah. through it. Right. And uh, I went I went to the I went to the first rehearsal and I said this was af just after I had come off of, of Night of the Iguana. And I said, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just going to take it easy this first rehearsal. And I didn't go into the depth of the emotion. And then we had, and then we had another rehearsal and I said, I'm just one more time. I'm, not, I'm just not going to go into those depths. I just need to give myself a little bit of time. 
And then I was fired because I wasn't producing what they needed. And I, I think, I'm not sure I would have survived emotionally if I had continued like that. I, it was just, it, it was too, it was too emotionally hard because you, because I was good at crying, I was getting crying parts and that was just, it just got to be too much. And it, it really kind of, it kind of cured me from wanting to, to, to act for a while. I mean, I think it maybe, maybe that's what drove me into singing because you can cry when you're singing, but it, but the emotion is in the song and in the words and it, it doesn't just rip the guts out of you. Like when you, when you're, um, when you're in, in, in roles that demand that of you. Exactly right. The singing, you can tell the story through the singing and the, the lyrics and, which is a beautiful thing. The, the singing and the acting, and of course you're a wonderful writer, producer as well. Do you love the singing as much as you do the acting, Lane? Oh, much more. More, yeah. Much more. It's because there's music and there's yeah. words and it's, I mean, I can use everything about me and put it into the song. Yeah. And, and you know, if I if if tears come to my eyes in some song, that's great. If they don't, it's okay. The song, the song, the music, where where I am is is what I need. And it it carries. You know, so I'm I am so happy and so blessed to be doing what I do now. It's extraordinary and uh, and continues to be. I, I mentioned Gypsy earlier. That was another iconic role. And uh, you, the very first actress to play Tati June in that original Broadway production. Uh, tell us about that extraordinary experience. I mean, working with quite a uh, group of other talented folk in that production, for sure, Lane. Well, the, I I auditioned for Gypsy and I didn't and and I didn't get cast, and and then after Gypsy had been in rehearsal for six weeks, my agent called me and told me that that they were firing the girl that was playing D Dainty June and hiring me. Didn't I didn't tell you this before? I think maybe, but for the new listeners, okay, viewers, yeah. Okay, so anyway, always they, a cool story the way you share it. <laughs> anyway, the my agent called me and told me that they were firing the girl playing Dainty June and hiring me. So I had three days to learn two songs, no, three songs, two dances, a whole lot of dialogue to twirl batons and do the time step. And they sent back they sent someone back from Philadelphia to coach me. And I I talk about this in one of my in one of my cabaret shows, the time step and twirling batons were not in my ballet repertoire. So about two sets of batons got tossed out the 45th Street studio windows because I was so frustrated knowing I would have to be on stage doing this in the next 24 hours. I mean, I don't, I look back on it now and I don't know how the hell I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you, but you, you're forced into it. So you do it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, just the exposure to, and, and such a brilliant role and to take it on with the tenacity and passion that you're known for. I, I want to sprinkle in too, that you have this wonderful sort of uh, friendship that was with Larry Hagman that goes back all the way to the outcasts yes. of Poker Flats. Tell us about that. That was one of the first, it was like 1958 we're talking. Yes, I mean, I was I was cast in, in the part and all these, George C. Scott, I mean, it was yeah. just 
stellar cast of people. And then little me, who, who'd never done, who'd been an extra on, on a couple of times. So, but, but had never done anything like this, but they were, they were so wonderful. Larry was so wonderful. I was having such a wonderful time doing the part. And then it came to be the night that we were, you know, it was live then. You, they, it was going out to the whole world, the whole nation when they actually filmed it. So I didn't come on until a little bit later. So I, I was in my dressing room and everybody else had already gone on and they were already on, on camera. And I started, I, I started running my lines and I couldn't remember them. I picked up my script. I read the script through. I couldn't remember them. I was absolutely terrified, just that that I was going to fail in front of the whole nation, in front of my family. That I I didn't have it. And then then my cue was coming up. I left. The, I walked out of my out of the dressing room. I looked up and and there was a monitor above the door and I saw Larry Hagman. And at that very moment, I just fell totally in love with him. And I thought, oh my goodness, he's my husband. And that just carried me through. What was he like to work with? He was incredible, was absolutely he? incredible. Everybody in the cast was incredible. And I mean, they were, they were really wonderful to me, you know, n nourishing and, and in including me in, in everything. And the director, I can't remember his name now, but he was wonderful too. I mean, it, it was, it was, except for that moment with in, which ended up being extraordinary. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, I, it was one of the, my first really extraordinary experiences. Did you have any interactions with his mother, Mary Martin, over the years as well? No, mm -mm. no, I never, I never did. Just watching her on stage. Yeah. Another incredible talent. Huh? Yeah. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree for sure. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how you've been able to negotiate and, and manage and balance the world of, of theater your your love and singing and performance with film and television you have literally touched all aspects of the arts whether on stage on television on film as a performer acting singing writing producing when did the television side of things start to come your way of course this with larry being a part of that when did that part start to also encompass your body of work? Because when you, you look truly at the amount of series that you've been a part of, whether it's one episode or several episodes, some iconic television shows we've all grown up with that are beloved, Lane Bradbury's in the credits. <laughs> well, I've been really, really lucky. Um, the first time that, that, um, I, my agent called me and he said they they want you to audition for some film and they and he said they want to they're going to fly you out there and then you're going to do a screen test and the 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 part did not call for tears but I thought if 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 I'm going there and I'm and I'm, and I'm filled up, you know, it will, it will certainly, um, it will certainly, you know, make my performance what it should be. And so um, I, there were, I think there were nine girls that were, that were auditioning for this film. And I think I was about number eight. So I was, you know, I was in my dressing room and you know, working, just relaxing and working and working and internally. And then it came, it came to be my time to, to go before the camera. 
and uh, and I had to be mad. I had to be mad in this scene, and it was mad over something that was really stupid. So, but I knew that I couldn't. I couldn't think that. I had to. It had to be real. So I I was working on on the inner life, and then, but I did not want to cry in the scene. But then when when we we actually started the camera, you know, the and and go. Um, I was mad, but a tear, a tear or two maybe dropped out of my eyes. And the cameraman said, "Cut! Mm. She's got something shiny on her face." <laughs> so they came and they wiped my tears away. But I was so friggin' mad at that yeah. that it just oh, I I did what I, I I did what the scene called for. Called for. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's one of those kind of Hollywood stories, you know. Exactly right. Yes. <laughs> In, including appearances on Gunsmoke. Another so fun. I tell you, huh? Yeah that what was that like for you well it was i that was such a wonderful set to be on i mean they everything was for the actors and uh, it was just heavenly i mean and yes when you're usually i would have some i would have i would have some scene where i had to cry um and but the, but i i had just you just do it you know you just do your preparation and and you and you go from there but there was there was one um there was one time when i was in a scene with doc and festus mm -hmm. and um i didn't have to cry but but it was mainly their scene but i was in there and they one of them did something and the other one broke up and then but we could not get through the scene because they kept breaking each other up <laughs> <laughs> and thank goodness it, it wasn't my fault but you know they they were trying so hard but you could see them <laughs> not, to, not, not to laugh but it just would come out so we have we finally just had to take a break so they could just separate, <laughs> and, and then, then when we got back together again, the the scene, they did the scene. But you know, that's that was, that was just, I don't know. It was it was kind of neat for me to see that it that that kind of thing can happen, and it's so. I mean, they've done it and done it and done it and done and break and they break each other up because they like each other so much right so it, it just, but it, it got a little out of hand yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's funny death valley days another classic you're in that as well which was really something and and in 71 you were in this as well maybe i'll come home in the spring tell us about that that uh that's the one was with Sally Field. Sally Field. I mean, that, yes. that was an extraordinary experience for me. Yes. Her. Um, I I love the character. Um I mean, that was that was one of the that was a show where everything felt complete. I mean, she was so amazing to work with. We had so much fun together. Um, it's funny when 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 the first day we were on the set together and she had a, a crying scene and I guess she knew that I had done a lot of those. And so she asked me, um, you know, she asked me about it and I said, well, you, you know, you just do your preparation and and then you go in and you do it. And and it was the scene. It was a scene where she's first come home and and she's in the bed and her parents discover her in the bed. And so it's, it was very emotional. She was extraordinary. I peeped in on it and she was absolutely extraordinary. And, and it was just, we had such fun working together uh, on that. And it was a high, it, that was a highlight for me. Mm. 
Absolutely. And a brilliant performance. Wings of an Angel, another. We go back in time a little bit, huh? That's a great shot of you, too. I don't, I don't, a, I don't remember. Look, look at that one. Wings of an Angel. That, that's a beautiful shot of you. And look at this other one we dug up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow. Tell us about this one. Well, that was, you know, me telling the moo cow goodbye. Yeah. You know, um, Gypsy was, it, it got, it, I can't say it was difficult. I, I did not have an easy time with Jerome Robbins. I mean, he, he, yeah, he's, he, he doesn't know how to treat actors. And I mean, he, I just felt like he was trying to destroy me. I yeah. had to do it in spite of him. And, um, he, there were he he could paralyze me. We were working on the the crossover scene, you know, where the dainty, baby June changes into dainty June, and he 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 paralyzed me so much I I couldn't I couldn't do the step. Hmm. I mean, I just I couldn't do it. No, and so I finally. I finally got where when they would always announce when he was going to be in the audience and something would always go wrong when he was there with me. And so I finally told the stage manager, please don't announce when he's going to be in the audience because I just fall apart. I And I hated that I did, but it it just, I was terrified of him. And I, I'm, I made up, I made up my mind that I would never, ever, ever be like that with anybody else that I worked with in any capacity, because he's, he was yeah. a destructive human being to me. And yet I've been, I've been, I was, did something at one point and Somebody that I was working with said I was in love with Jerry Robbins, and I'm, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you go, go, to go each, <laughs> to each his own, right? Exactly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> beauty's, in the, yeah. beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and yeah. all of that other. That is funny, but uh, but yeah, working with Sally, like you said, was uh, mm. was quite a treat, and she really is a, a, a brilliant. Yeah. The actress on, on so many levels. Here's another wonderful shot of you. Look at this. With Patrick, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us what was happening here in this shot. Well, that, that's that's when, you know, I, I run on stage yeah. crying, sobbing, and, and I'm trying to get him to be with me. Yeah. And I think this... This, I don't think this was not during a performance. It was just, you know, staged. Right. So I don't think I'm really crying there. But when when the times that I didn't, that it, I wasn't full, the scene fell completely flat. Mm. Mm. And I, the, the thing that was interesting, I'm going through the tortures of the damned and the audience is laughing. That was something to get used to. But then if they weren't laughing, that meant the scene went flat. Now, that is just... Try to figure that out, right? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those bizarre things of, of theater, you know? Yes, exactly. It, and it can change from night to night, depending on the audience and the weather and what's going on in the world. What, uh, what, what was constant was if Lane as Charlotte wasn't full emotionally right he went right down the tubes and it was i don't think that happened but maybe two or three times two or three but, times but yeah. when it but when it did happen it, the scene just fell up was no was nothing yeah nothing nothing there yeah nothing there basically 
Alice doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> Good segue to that. Yeah. Another iconic thing to be a part of. Tell us about that, Lane. Well, um, then I, I just had that one little scene. And yeah. so I, I got there the day before and um, I, I had dinner um, with Harvey the, the night before we shot and we had the best time together. We laughed, we giggled, we liked each other. And then, um, and then the next day I arrived on the set and uh, uh, we proceeded to, you know, I, I, did, a, I did an emotional preparation um, to do the scene because he's, he's having an affair with, um, with, um, I don't know her names and I see her every, every week at the studio. So I'm blanking, but, but with his, with his girlfriend and, uh, and so I, it's an emotional scene between the two of us and I'm begging her please not to see him anymore because, you know, I, I have ch a child and I'm pregnant again. And so and Ellen and, and, and so Ellen and I really, yeah. Ellen Bernstein. Yeah. Was, yes. We worked really beautifully together. And then he, he bangs on the door and is screaming, you know, and he's, and, and comes in. And from the moment he came in, the first of all, he, he hit the door, I think. And it was glass, you know, that breakaway glass. And, but it cut him, so he's bleeding. And he grabbed me, tossed me to the floor. All I could think about was just getting out of air. Mm -hmm. And I'm crawling over this broken glass. But it, but, I mean, the scene is, it's real. Um, and, it, and he did it. I mean, it was just, it was a, a harrowing experience. And I, I did hear, and I, I haven't talked to Ellen about this, but I heard that after that scene, she went to her dressing room for about three hours. She just, to recover from it. Was it. that intense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that it intense? It was not acting. It was, no. to us, it was not acting. It was living it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then came Bronson, too, is another one you were a part of. I mean, it, uh, truly, like I said, you are a part of Americana. You can't turn on the tube or whatever and not see Lane Branbury in, in, in something. What was it like working on this with this epic lineup of fellow talent? I loved working yeah. with him. And I think we got kind of a crush on each other. But that's <laughs> that, you know, that. <laughs> that ended when it that ended when when the show ended yeah uh, i can remember there was a scene where the two of us are lying on the floor talking together and the butterflies in my stomach was so fierce and the director walks by and i thought can he see what's going on in me <laughs> you know it was just so it was so completely real the way it really would have been um, but it, so it, it, I mean, when something's that intense and that exciting, you just can't help but love it. You know, you, you don't have to act. You just, you just wander onto the, 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 the uh, soundstage or into the, into the, the situation, you know? Right. Exactly. And, uh, and then you hit your mark and you make magic yeah. as, as you always have, my friend. The Fugitive, David Jansen, another one. You're in that as well, which is extraordinary. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Quest for Justice and Savannah and Stolen Babies as well. Another one. Um, that was something to be a part of that. Yes, but I don't even remember that. No, that goes back. No. Partridge family. I do remember that. Yes, remember the Partridge that. family. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and there's so many, it's hard to like, gee, I was in that, and I was in that, and part of that, and was I in that? And it's, what was it like working with uh, David Cassidy, Shirley Jones? And Because at that time, 
those shows on television were so iconic and beloved. And whenever anybody was a guest star on the show or what have you, people would talk about that in the, the teen magazines. And it's just like, it would be blown up for days. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, um, just before I did that show, I'd had an operation to get pregnant. Right. And so, you know, that's life changing. So yes. this was the first show that I did after that surgery. And um, what I was doing seemed so inconsequential to where I was as a human being and is hope and hopefully would be a mother. But it worked for the it worked for the character because I didn't he, he was after me, but I could care, have cared less for him. So it, it, it ended up working in my favor. Um, and I'm sure if I, if, if I had had to have been in love with him, I, I could have manifested that. But it, but the fact that, that, you know, I, I didn't particularly care for him worked for me in this situation. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and uh, you, we were not working from the midst of pain. <laughs> another segue. Uh, another, this was a terrific performance as well. Well, um, this was um, quite riveting. It, I mean, it was this was something that I put together to yeah. with with several friends to um, bring attention to, you know, women that have been abused and- Yes. And- um, Wonderful documentary. And, and so there were, there were some very real, real moments in that, especially, I mean, when, when one of the women started telling her story and she could barely get through it because the, it was, you know, but that got caught and on film and hopefully it shed some light on this situation, you know, of That's, abuse. Yeah. A story that needs to be told. And do you love documentary work? I did love this. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I was working with the director was Nuncio Fazio and he was fantastic to work with. And, um, it it just it was um it was a very it was a very moving experience for me another one too that's very recent that uh you also were a writer for you're not alone tell us about that i i did that yeah you're not, what do you recall that one no no, don't recall that one, huh? No. Hmm. That's interesting. Wow. I don't know what that... There's no involvement with that at all? Mm -mm. Nothing, huh? Mm -mm. Hmm. That's in the IMDB, too. They have that in there. Well, I mean, you know, I'm... <laughs> You're omnipresent and don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, not alone. That skips, that skips my mind. I just. That's something. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, this is a great shot too. Oh. I love the shot of you. Well, this, this was, um, this was something that I wrote called myth of always. And, you know, it's, it, it, it involved, you know, creatures of another world moving into this world yeah, and, and uh, this was a publicity shot um, for it that you know we did on location, and so I have really, I have really warm feelings about this. Yeah, it's very very special, you know. And again, we are just scratching the surface of so many things you've been a part of that people remember billions and Carmen, and even on. Uh, the Fox television network, you were in party of five, 
another iconic show. You were on Mod Squad. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a great shot too. Great shot, yeah. Yeah, huh? What was it like working on that in another classic series? Well, it was fun. I mean, you know, the I I they were they were wonderful to work with. Yeah. And you know, I I could you I I felt like with with them I could do good work, you know. Mm -hmm. That if they were they were behind you doing good work. The other the other person that sets the stage for actors was Carol O'Connor. Oh, he, yeah. He, I mean when you walked on that set with him, it was your set. In the heat of the night. Yeah. yeah. And when you got ready to do a preparation, it was your time. Yes. And he just backed every single a, moment. A very giving actor, mm -hmm. right? Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. yeah. And the antithesis of Archie Bunker. Uh, Ooh, yes. Total, yeah. Yes. The total opposite of right. Archie, right. classically trained, funny, Irish yeah. humor, and just really yeah. uh, everybody I've ever talked to has said that uh, he was such a giving actor and, and of course, uh, gone way too soon and is so uh, significantly yeah. missed uh, to this day. You also had an opportunity to run on Robert Stack on Solved Mysteries, even on episode of that as well. <laughs> That that didn't leave much of an impression on me. It, <laughs> um, I, I remember it, but it just it didn't it wasn't you know, doesn't type out. resonate in the heat of the night. You know, yeah, in the heat of the night was really a very special special series, and uh, just took on these incredible topics that were so important and so relevant. You know, about life and about. Uh, people and look at that shot. Yes, that was um, that my Lou Antonio directed this. This mm. music. What was the name of it? This um, one is. Yeah. Let's see. Do you recall this one? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but but it was a lot of fun, and I yeah, you know, I got to dance and yeah, sing and and. Uh, it was just, it was really, really fun to do. Look at that shot there. I believe yeah. that's with Dennis Weaver, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's another great shot. Yeah. Look at that one. I don't know what that one's from. This was just a, one of those posed shots that you do, you know, for. Yeah. All the different hairstyles, all the different looks that are yeah. called upon. I love this shot of you. It's so natural. Yes. And so you, you know. I think that was just one of those that you have taken. It's not from yeah. any any film or anything. I know you love the performances. I know you love to do the shows and and so much more. Are you working on some additional things as well to get back out there and continue, my friend? Well, I've got three shows that I do. Um one is completely in French. Um, and then I have another one, uh, Let Me Entertain You Again, which I kind of go through yes. all my gypsy stuff. And um, then one called We Must Remember These Moments. And that, that um, I, it, it's, I'm starting to, to really, the, the thing that I want to do, I love all, doing all of these. But the one that I that I want to do with Kurt, really, we both want it to go into what we can say and sing that will help the world that we live in, you know, to a a better a better place. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm very. I'm scared for us. I'm scared for where this country's heading. And um, so I think both Kurt and I feel very strongly that whatever we can do as performers to 
shed light because for, I think for both of us, it's been things that we have seen on stage or in a film that have pointed us in another direction. Right. You know, opened us up completely to a, wow. to another direction of thinking. So I know what that, I because of having experienced it, I know what it can do to people. And so I think that's where our, I'm, I know that's where our focus is, you know, whatever, anything we could do to, to enlighten and, and change people. Is there a memoir in the offing? I, oh, I forgot about that. I did write a memoir. Did you know that? No, that I didn't know. It's, it's called My Unruly Imagination. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you said that because yeah. it, you can you can order it from Amazon, and it, I, it I don't pull any punches in that. <laughs> no, huh? <laughs> no. What was it like writing that? You know, you're a writer. What was it like telling those stories? Well, I actually it happened during the pandemic, and I I, I sat down to write um, another cabaret show, which ended up being called. Um, we must remember these moments, but the cabaret show got longer and longer and longer and longer. And then I realized I was writing a memoir. So I just finished and it got me through the, the pandemic. You know, by the time the pandemic end, ended, I had a memoir done plus another cabaret show. So, you know, I put that time to good use. You sure did. I, that's incredible. How, how quickly did you write the memoir? Well, it was done. How, we were in we were in shut down for how many nine months? It's like forever, right? Uh, for I don't remember now, but but yeah. I I was I finished the memoir and I finished. Um, we must remember these moments. So you know, there's the memoir. Yeah. Yeah, we called it up. There it is, an unruly imagination. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Congratulations on the memoir. Thank you. Wow, I, I'm going to have to make sure I get that. I realized so that was a that was a quote pandemic project then. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't realize that. That's some congratulations on that. You know, a, a published author is quite a feather in the cap, my friend. It really is sharing your stories and you know and and being so open and real as you are. And it's a phenomenal title as well. Well, it's that the. the I do have that kind of imagination that just goes, <laughs> goes absolutely haywire. So yeah. <laughs> it it's felt real to, to call it that. Very, very creative. Uh, I just want to make mention too, for the, the fans out there who know you from some of the other work, we'd be remiss to not mention of all these other incredible things. And, you know, there's so many things that Lane has been a part of and we're just touching upon a few of them. I know there's many, many, many more. You could always dig and, and Google, but the Rockford Files, Medical Center, Mannix, Owen Marshall, Counselor at Larsh, the Waltons, Kung Fu as well. And of course, some additional film credits, The Ultimate Warrior. Uh, as we mentioned, maybe I'll come home in the spring to dance with a white dog. Mm -hmm. And of course, with Theater Marathon, 33. I mean, when you, not that you do, because you're always so busy and doing and creating, do you ever stop and look back at some of the incredible repertoire of, repertoire of art that you've created for all of us and, and say, wow, I've been busy. <laughs> well, I do that every time I rehearse or every time I'm on stage, you know, because I'm using I'm using things that meant something to me and and that I I feel like I want to share and sometimes really need to be sh shared. What are some things that mean the most to you that you love sharing? Things that no matter what you do in life, Lane, they're very paramount to you. They have to be expressed. You have to communicate them to, to others. What are a few of those very deep and dear things 
that matter most to you? Well, it, it you know, it depends on where you where you are in your life. Um, I I was not. I'll just tell you one story because it's what's coming to me. I was not very popular when I was younger and I, I didn't have dates and, you know, I just wasn't popular. And then um, uh, I was in the eighth grade and the, a guy that was, a, I think he was president of the school and he was a big football player. And for some reason, he asked me on a date. And he came to pick me up and there was a couple in the back seat. I was absolutely, I could, I was so, I was so nervous. I couldn't talk. I mean, we just sat there like, I just sat there like a dummy. And then he took me to a movie um, called The Moon is Blue. And the, the, the lead actress was Maggie McNamara. And she was just full of life and vinegar and fun and cute as she could be. The movie was over. She had jumped into my soul and from, from walking up the aisleway to go back to her, our car, I never stopped talking. I was so damn cute. You couldn't believe it. <laughs> Still are. <laughs> the, the, the guy asked me to go out again and I thought, oh, he is so boring. I mean, it, she absolutely changed my life. So, the, and that, that kind of thing has happened to me two or three times and where things just, that, and it's been things that I've seen on stage. So I think that's another reason why I, I know that what we say and do as performers can have a huge effect on people. So yeah. If 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 I if if Kurt and I can help change things um in this country even a little bit, I will I will feel like um I'm doing my job. That's so beautifully said, you know, because I said you, you've touched us in so many other ways, but you have this deep passion and mission to want to make the world a better place and bring us all together, which is something that we we really need. We always say there's levity on this show, love and levity, and it's so true. But, you know, to be able to, to use your voice and, and to express it at a time when there's a lot of people that are hurting, that need healing that need to come together, uh, that feel lost and, and not represented or seen or heard. And I know that deeply bothers you and that's why you involve yourself in projects and causes and things that you truly believe in, whether it's you know projects in television, stage or film, the entertainment side, but just in everyday living, you've always been somebody who is passionate and, and always trying to find the good in it all, right, Lane? Yeah. And that means something and that really stands for something. And it's a, it's an idea representation truly of who Lane Bradbury is as much as there's this spectacular persona and this Hollywood and Broadway image underneath all of that, there's this human being who cries and laughs and, and is fearful and is happy and joyful and knows that she's blessed and grateful and, and still, through all these decades of incredible caring and, and presentation, she's there to give us an opportunity to think and question and love and, and wrap our arms around one another and continue to savor every second of living and being. And I think that's an absolutely sweet spot and beautiful spot that you're in lane and that you've absolutely earned. Thank you. I have absolutely enjoyed being on your show so much this second time and and we do, we must get together again and in in real life 
Yes, absolutely. I shall bring the wine. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I shall drink it. <laughs> and she shall drink it <laughs> with the pinky out and all. You are, as I said, truly an absolute treasure. Thank you. And I, I know you as a friend. So, but for those watching, you know, right now around the world, uh, Lane is everything you would hope, folks. She's real. She's affable. She's passionate. She's forthright. She's compassionate and empathetic and she's beloved and she's a super talent and to have her take time just coming back literally fresh from French lessons. How did those go? <laughs> well, I'm, I, my teacher Suzanne is just the very best and she has the patience of all God's angels and maybe God himself with me. But, <laughs> do you do that best. weekly? Every week I have, I have one, one on Wednesday, we have a two hour session where we go over all my French songs and dialogue. And then, and then we're reading Le Petit Prince uh, and, and she, and she makes it fun for, for somebody that's not really an intellect. You know, I, I would, I have never been an intellect. And, <laughs> and so she, she's amazing with me. And you're amazing with us, Lane. Thank you so very much. I truly am blessed that you can come back to see us. And uh, it really will keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back anytime. Keep me abreast of all the beautiful projects you have going on. And when they come to fruition, we'll be there front row rooting for you. And uh, looking forward to getting together yes. uh, for dinner yes. and all again real soon. And I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely I did. It was you. so much fun. It was wonderful being back with you. I love you very much, my friend. Mm. Big kiss to you. To you too. You be well. You take care. And you are a technical whiz. <laughs> you, you, she, she figured all of this out herself to get on that screen for all of you folks. She is a genius in so many ways. She can plug those plugs together and make it happen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Lane. You take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye now. Bye. The incomparable Lane Bradbury. Lots of fun, lots of memories, lots of stories, and uh, digging up from the archives a lot dusting off some of the incredible things that she's been a part of and some vague and some right off the tip of the tongue and, uh, and the memoir too, which that is in case you didn't know, I think that's exciting to even learn that uh, she's got this wonderful memoir, which was a, you know, th something she did during the pandemic. There it is. You can get it at Amazon on unruly imagination. Pick that up. You know, it's going to be a page turner. I can't wait to get it myself now that she mentioned it here on the show. Uh, you know, I've been so busy and all, I didn't realize that she had this and because she's always got her hands in so many incredible things, but uh, that is the memoir that is hot off the presses. So make sure you, you get that. She really is, uh, again, somebody very, very, very special. And we're so excited. Uh, you know, there's so many incredible things that, uh, and there is again, the memoir, so many incredible things that she has done and continues to do. But underneath it all, the smiles, the tears, the joy, the laughter, she uh, has been somebody who has continued to share so much of herself with all of us and all the various ways and shapes and forms and costumes and outfits and lighting and sets and co-stars and cities and locales and productions and television film stage. She has just continued to shine the light as she shines for truly all of us. She is a, a breath of fresh air. She's a magical person and she's a lot of funny too. She's very funny. She's very humble and very open and real. Could you tell? You know, she pulls no punches. She's very open about herself, about her life. You know, not a lot of people in these industries are. They always just regarded. They don't tell you who the real person is. Lane has always been somebody who is real and open with open arms. And we're so blessed to have her here. If you enjoyed this episode of the Gym Masters Show Live series, folks, this uh, will be archived on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. You can see it again. You can share it 
We hope you'll give this episode a thumbs up like. There's a little like button there on the channel. Give it a like, leave a comment. We would love it if you interact with us. What's some of your favorite Lane Bradbury movies and shows and specials and productions and so much more. Leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, which is the channel you're watching. And uh, don't forget to click the notification bell, little bell icon, so you never miss any of the episodes of our exclusive Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series. We thank so very, very much our very special guest, the one and only Lane Bradbury, making her return visit, her return engagement here on the Jim Masters Show Live series. Iconic TV, film, stage, actress, writer, producer, joining us here for some laughter, light, and fun and memories on the Jim Masters Show. I am your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. We appreciate you being with us all around the world. Like, comment, subscribe. Come by and see us again. Take care of one another, love one another, and don't forget to take care of yourself and love yourself. I'll keep the light on for you. I appreciate the time. We love you all. And join us again on the Jim Master Show series. Be well. Cheers. <laughs>